So you have written your application and now you want to run it in the AWS cloud. There are many options to run application in AWS, but let's suppose you are torn between serverless AWS Lambda and managed Kubernetes AWS EKS service. So how do you select which one to use for your application? EKS versus Lambda choice is easy to make if you understand following differences. So let's go through them one by one. Earlier, AWS Lambda was mainly for event-driven programming and EKS was for container orchestration. But things are evolving rapidly and both Lambda and EKS are offering much more. For example, with the help of Crossplane, you can now use EKS as infrastructure as code, just like Terraform. So you can provision AWS resources from within Kubernetes cluster or EKS cluster by using Crossplane. And I have another video which contains step-by-step -step instructions as how to do it. Anyway, I'm assuming that you already have a basic understanding of what serverless and EKS are. So in this video, we are only going to see how to select between Elastic Kubernetes Service or EKS in short and Lambda for your application deployment. First thing you need to consider is operations. In Lambda, there are no servers to provision configure, manage, or patched. You don't have to really worry about backing services like databases or storage with Lambda. On the other hand, in Kubernetes, you have to keep updating cluster every four months. Even with one click updates on EKS, you may face issues with add-on components. And the add-on add -on components like load balancer controller, they might break with every update. You also have to keep the client CLIs like kubectl, ham CLI updated, or make sure that they remain compatible with new updates. And if you're using your own EC2 instances as nodes within EKS, then you need to take care of those VMs in terms of patching updates and other things which are really, which are normally associated with the EC2 instances. Then comes the cost. As you know, cost is a huge thing everywhere these days. So when it comes to Lambda, pay as you go is always there. You don't pay when the service is not running, but due to the nature of serverless, it becomes a bit hard to do the capacity planning in terms of the cost, and you can't really predict the eventual cost of the Lambda function beforehand. Whereas EKS cost is predictable, and it also allows you to use cloud model of pay as you go. You could also utilize spot instances in EKS for compute to drastically lower the cost if your application supports it. In some cases, you can have more than 90% of cost savings if you, if you are using spot instances. Next thing to consider is scalability. AWS Lambda, like any other serverless service, can scale easily and seamlessly. But there is one catch. This skill, uh, scalability hits the wall when it hits the AWS hard limit, then you don't have any choice. But in case of EKS, you need to take care of the scaling by yourself. You can use node autoscaler such as cluster autoscaler or carpenter, or you could, or, and then you have to use the pod autoscaler such as horizontal and vertical autoscalers. Then you need to consider what's experience like for users and developers. For users, it really doesn't make much difference until you hit the limits. But as far as developers are concerned, you need to really make sure that your developers are comfortable with either technology. So when it comes to Lambda for developers, developers have to learn the AWS service Lambda, especially how it performs within AWS VPC, um, what are endpoints, how does that interaction work, and so on and so forth. And you have to also take care of all the ingress and egress. Plus, if you're using any front-end service like, for example, API Gateway, you also, your developers also need to be aware of it. One good thing about Lambda in, for developer experience is that for well, it can easily integrate with your DevOps pipelines. And if you're using AWS's own 
DevOps services like code commit and code pipeline. Lambda is a natural integration. Another thing about AWS Lambda is that there is a um, functionality through which you can a developer can run the Lambda locally on their client, but it is still a pain. If you have worked in Kubernetes though, transition to EKS is seamless. And developers don't need much learning in that regard. Once the cluster is up and running, the experience is almost identity, identical to other Kubernetes offerings. Kubernetes or EKS, uh, in this case, it naturally integrates with all the DevOps services. It's very easy to run Kubernetes cluster locally. Next consideration to make is about community. As we know, AWS Lambda is an AWS service, so there's a vendor lock-in, of course, but it's not really hard to liaison with other cloud providers because every cl cloud provider these days is offering some serverless functionality to deploy your code. So the, a general community, which is cross-cloud provider, is growing, but fairly, it's not really as big as a Kubernetes community. When it comes to Kubernetes, whether it is EKS or AKS or GKE, everyone follows the CNCF and the open standards. Kubernetes community at large supports EKS, and there are lots and lots of open source projects which are going around and which are EKS specific. And all of them have one thing in common. They're all open source and they all follow the same standard. Apart from these, so apart from these five uh, categories, there are various other considerations which you should take into account. One thing is monitoring and logging. Good thing about both Lambda and EKS is that both integrate with CloudWatch, which is AWS uh, monitoring and logging service. And moreover, EKS also integrates with other monitoring system and logging systems. For example, uh, it integrates with ELK and EFK. So if you want to use that, you can. And it's a very important consideration is about security. Both Lambda and EKS can use AWS IAM for authentication and authorization, and both integrated integrate nicely with IAM. At the end, it all boils down to your application requirement. Your, <clears throat> whenever you're faced with that quandary as which one to use out of Lambda and EKS, go through these yardsticks and make your decision. I hope this helped. If you have any questions or feedback, please put them put them in the comments. Thank you very much.